welcome back to the Solo Gamers Club. We're continuing with our playthrough of Eldritch Horror. This is part three. I'll give us a little bit of a update as to how we're doing, and then we'll commence with our next turn. Our heroes are relatively healthy, which is a good thing. We have Daryl Simmons with two clue tokens. He has um, six out of his seven health, all five of his sanity. He does have two impairments to his observation, uh, so that reduces that down to four. Uh, Hank Sampson is at eight of eight health and four of four sanity. He has a plus one to lore, but a impairment to his will. So his will's at two. Monterey Jack is at full capacity. He is at uh, seven health and four out of his five sanity. He has two impairments, one to strength and one to will. And finally, Roland Banks. Roland has two um, focus tokens and he currently is at six out of seven health and five of five sanity. He has two impairments to his observation, unfortunately, but he does have uh, one bonus to strength and it moves his strength up to three. Our first mystery is to um, defeat the winged serpent in Tokyo. And uh, that is a very tough creature. So we've been attempting to build up uh, our capabilities. Um, more than likely, I'm gonna be using Hank Sampson as the primary investigator to be going after him. Unfortunately, we had our investigators in and around Tokyo, but there was a, an event that moved them uh, to different locations around the board. So we're going to have to regather and make a push for defeating that winged serpent in Tokyo. Now we're playing with a prelude uh, that's called Written in Stone. And part of that is that we're going to be playing with a revealed gate stack, the top gate is revealed at all times. But whenever the omen track moves to the color of that gate, the doom track will go down by one. Currently our doom track is at eight right now. Uh, the next gate to come out is going to be unfortunately in Tokyo. So that will bring out another monster in Tokyo in addition to that winged serpent that we want to defeat. We've already completed four mythos cards and there were four cards in stage one so these next set of cards are going to be part of stage two stage two consists of two green cards three yellow and one blue so we're going to have a one in six chance of drawing a rumor card on this next turn and we're going to have a 50 percent chance of drawing a yellow card which is going to um, have a rumor effect so we're going to have to hopefully be able to take care of our uh, our initial mystery in Tokyo and uh, not drag that along too much more. We're running out of time. And we're ready to begin our next turn. Our lead investigator is Monterey Jack. He's currently in the Caribbean in Space 8. If everything remains the same, the Omen track would move to a blue star pattern, which is going to set off uh, the gate in Buenos Aires, as well as uh, decrease our doom track by one for the gate top of the gate stack that is going to be in Tokyo. Uh, so I think we're going to try to get Monterey Jack to Buenos Aires and he's going to uh, try to combat that fire bug that's there and then possibly close the gate in Buenos Aires. So we're going to start with a a move action for Monterey Jack. He moves from the Caribbean using the sea lane to Buenos Aires. And his second action is going to be a focus action. He'll gain a focus token that might be helpful for him when he battles that firebug. And that's going to end his turn and we'll move on to Roland Banks. Roland Banks is in the Hawaiian Islands region in Space 2. Roland is somewhat caught in between a rock and a hard place. Um, his paths of movement would be to either go to Tokyo where he would have to battle that 
winged serpent, which he's really not set up to do yet. Uh, or he could head back to San Francisco where he would possibly battle that young Catholian and maybe close the gate in San Francisco. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a move action for Roland and he's going to return to San Francisco. And then while in San Francisco, he is going to do a gather resources action that will gain him a resource token. And that's going to end his action phase. We'll move on to Daryl Simmons. Daryl Simmons is in the Himalayas. And Daryl's going to do a move action. He's going to use the uncharted path from the Himalayas and he's going to travel to Bombay, India. Daryl reaches Bombay and then he's going to uh, conduct a focus action where he'll gain a one focus token. And that's going to complete Daryl's action phase. We'll move on to Hank Sampson. Hank Sampson is currently in Shanghai, but he is delayed. So he's not going to be able to conduct any actions other than just standing up in the city. Hank Sampson stands up and that's going to complete the action phase. We'll move on to the encounter phase and we'll start with Monterey Jack. Monterey Jack is in Buenos Aires and he's in the same space as a monster. So he's going to have to conduct a combat encounter with the firebug. Now the firebug has an influence rather than a will test. But it does say on here, if you pass the will test, defeat the monster. So if we're able to pass that will test, it has a horror value of one, we would automatically defeat that fire bug. So we're gonna have Monterey Jack do a uh, influence test. His influence is currently at a two. Monterey rolls a five and a one, so he's successful. So we defeat the firebug, and then um, as a bonus, Monterey is able to take another action in Buenos Aires. And Monterey is going to attempt a token encounter where he's going to try to close that gate that's in Buenos Aires. So we're going to be doing a gate encounter. And the cards reveal to be the Great Hall of Seleno. And it reads, A hooded figure invites you to sit. His pen is poised to write and he looks to you expectingly, waiting for you to tell him a story. You may spend one clue to resolve the pass effect. If you do not spend the clue, resolve the fail effect. Well, unfortunately, Monterey Jack does not have a clue token. Uh, so we will have to undergo the fail effect. And it reads, the figure invents a story about your failure, lose to sanity. At the conclusion of the tale, he inscribes a phrase in an alien language, test lore. Two. And we're going to have to do a lore test for Monterey. His lore is a two. Now Monterey does have one focus token that he can use. And Monterey did a great job. He rolled two successes, a five and a six. We'll read on. It says, if you pass, you interpret the words and speak them aloud to mend the terror. In reality, close this gate. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. So we're going to close that gate in Buenos Aires. Great job by Monterey Jack. And that's going to complete Monterey Jack's encounter phase. We'll move on to Roland Banks. He's currently in San Francisco. Now, unfortunately, there is a young Chthonian in San Francisco, so his encounter will have to be a combat encounter. We'll take a look at that young Chthonian. And the Chthonian has, starts out with a will minus one test. It has a horror value of two. And then followed by a strength minus one test with two damage. It has a toughness of three. All right. Um, Roland has a combat value of two. He has a plus one improvement. And he also has an axe. And the axe gains plus two to combat during combat encounters. And it says you may spend two sanity to reroll any number of dice when resolving the strength test during a combat encounter. All right, so we'll begin with the will test. Roland Banks' will is a three. He has two focus tokens. He also has a practiced talent. So for the test, Roland has a will of three. The test is a minus one, so he'll be rolling two dice. And unfortunately, Roland rolled a one and a four, so he has no successes. The full amount of the horror is going to kick in, and 
Roland Banks is going to lose two sanity. That will drop him from five down to three sanity. We'll move on to the combat test. Roland has a combat value of two and improvement of plus one, so that's a total of three. He's also going to use his X, which will give him plus two, so that's five dice. However, the test is a minus one strength, so he'll be rolling a total of four dice. And Roland does one hit, and it does say that on the X, you may spend two sanity to re-roll any number of dice when resolving a strength test. Well, that would put Roland down to one sanity, so I don't think we want to do that. What we will do is uh, we'll try to use our practiced talent, which says once per round, you may roll one additional die and re-roll up to one when resolving a test. If you failed the test, flip the card. All right. So with that card, uh, Roland is going to re-roll one of his missed die, and then we're going to add in an extra die for the test. We'll re-roll that uh, one, I believe. And unfortunately, both of those dice miss. So I think what we'll do is we're going to have Roland uh, use one of his focus tokens and he's going to re-roll one of those missed die. And that ends up to be a miss. So I think we're going to not spend any more focus. Uh, we're going to have to, we did have one success, so that will reduce the damage that we're going to take from the creature by one. So we'll be taking two minus one, one damage. That'll bring his health down from six down to five. And we will inflict one hit on that young Chthonian and that would move his toughness from three down to two. Now, Roland does have a resilient ability, which would, once per round, when you would lose health, you may test strength. If you pass, prevent the loss of up to two health. We could use that, um, but I think in this case, I don't want to risk it. His, uh, his strength is only a total of three, so we'd still be looking at, you know, 40% uh, or 45% chance of success. So I think we'll just pass on that, and that's going to end Roland's turn. We'll move on to Daryl Simmons. And we've marked the young Chthonian with one hit. Now we'll move on to Daryl Simmons. Daryl is in Bombay, India, space 17. And Daryl Simmons is in Bombay, India. That's in a city location. He is going to undertake a location adventure, and we'll be using the generic city card. And that encounter reads, a man called Joey the Rat offers you the secret of a hidden treasure. You haggle over the price. Test influence. All right, uh, Daryl Simmons currently has an influence of four. Uh, he normally has a, f uh, I'm sorry, he has a current influence of two. He normally has a four, but it has been degraded by two points. So he has two, but he rolls an additional die when resolving a test during a location encounter on a city space. So he'll be rolling a total of three dice for the test. Daryl roll, rolled one success, so we'll continue to read on. It says, if you pass, he sells you an old drawing. Gain one treasure map, unique asset. All right. And we've gained that treasure map, unique asset, and it says when you gain this card from the deck, place one random clue token face up on the card. And we discover that that treasure map is going to be useful in Tokyo. So uh, we're fairly near Tokyo, but unfortunately that winged serpent is still there. We've got to get rid of that thing. All right, that's going to complete Daryl Simmons's turn. We'll move on to Hank Sampson in Shanghai. All right, uh, Hank is in Shanghai. He has the choice of taking a generic city encounter or the Shanghai encounter. And uh, I, think we'll, I think we'll try the Shanghai encounter. And the card reads, A historian visiting from New England shows you a profane golden jewel. Just the sight of it disturbs you. Test will minus one. Okay, uh, Hank Sampson currently has a will value of two. Um, so, uh, he is going to only be able to roll one dice on this test. He has no focus and no clues. And unfortunately, Hank rolled a four. That's a failure, uh, so we'll have to read, read on. And it says here, uh, if you fail, something about the jewel haunts you. Lose one sanity 
and gain a madness condition. Okay. So the failure is going to reduce him down to three sanity and he's going to gain that despair condition. Um, it says when you perform a rest action, you cannot recover sanity. Fl flip this card. And then during a reckoning effect, he's going to lose an additional sanity. All right. And that completes the encounter phase. We'll move on to the mythos phase. And the card is a ongoing rumor card. We had a one in six chance of that coming out on that first part of stage two, and that's what happened. So we're going to begin with a spawn clues. We'll spawn two clues on the board. And the two clues were revealed to be space 15, that's Cape Town, South Africa, and space 12, that's the um, southern part of the Atlantic Ocean. And now we're going to read the ongoing rumor. It says, the conspiracy is vastly more organized and widespread than believed. The cult's practitioners are everywhere, and their profane rites are not isolated incidents. Their work is combining into a single, sickening harmony, awakening the old ones. As an encounter, an investigator on a space containing a clue may attempt to stop the ritual. A cultist monster ambushes him. If he defeats it, he places that clue on his card, on this card. When there are clues on this card equal to half the number of investigators, so two will solve the rumor. It does have a reckoning effect, and that is advanced doom by one and spawn one clue. All right, that's going to complete the turn. So we're going to have to divide and conquer, I think. Um, half of the investigators are going to attempt to re get rid of that rumor card, and the other half are going to have to try to take out that winged serpent. We'll begin the new turn with our lead investigator, Monterey Jack. He is in Buenos Aires. And I think to begin with uh, Monterey Jack, he's going to start with a rest action. And that's going to increase his sanity from two to three. And then Monterey's going to conduct a move action. He's going to take the C lane going towards the C space 11. I'm going to try to get him in through Africa possibly attempting a research action in Cape Town, South Africa, and have him move towards Istanbul, where there is the expedition, and then also moving him closer towards Tokyo in case he's needed in support for our attack on that winged serpent. So he's going to take a move action. We'll move him to Space 11. He arrives in Space 11, and that's going to end his action phase. We'll move on to Roland Banks. Roland is currently in San Francisco with a gate and a young Chthonian that he wounded in the previous turn. I'm going to have Roland remain where he is. He is going to conduct a focus action and a um, resource action. So he's going to gain a token of each. I would have liked to have had a rest action for him, but we can't do that with the Chthonian in the space. That completes Roland Banks' turn. We'll move on to Daryl Simmons in Bombay. Daryl's going to begin with a travel action, and we'll have him move to um, Shanghai, where he's going to try to assist Hank Sampson. And now while he's in Shanghai, he's going to conduct a trade action, where he's going to be able to trade some items to Hank Sampson. And Daryl's going to give him both of his clue tokens, as well as his camera. And that camera says once per round, when you spend a clue, you may gain a clue. So that's like a free use of a clue token. And that is going to complete Daryl Simmons' turn. We'll move on to Hank Sampson. And Hank is going to begin with a focus action, so that will gain him a focus token. And his second action is going to be a rest action. Now, he has a despair condition, which says that when you perform a rest action, you cannot recover sanity. Flip this card. So we're going to flip that despair token card and see what happens. And that card reads, Accursed Memories. Nothing but blasphemous memories fill your mind, driving you to madness and despair. Surely, beating the memories from your skull is the only release. Test strength. If you pass, discard this card. If you fail, discard two clues 
and flip this card. All right. Fortunately, Hank has a strength of four, so we're going to be able to roll four dice for the test. And Hank was able to pass it. He rolled a five, so that allows us to discard the card. That's fantastic. And that's going to complete Hank Sampson's turn, uh, and we'll move on to the encounter phase. Our lead investigator is still Monterey Jack. He's in a sea space, sea space 11, so he's going to conduct a general encounter in a sea location. And the encounter reads, The crew plans to bury a dead sailor at sea in the morning. The man had arcane words tattooed all over his skin, and you spent the night studying them. Test will. All right, uh, Monterey Jack's will is a two, but with one impairment, so he'll be rolling one dice for the test. And unfortunately, Monterey rolled a two, so that's a failure. We do have a focus token that we could use. Uh, it says if you pass, you gain a glamour spell. If you fail, he begins talking to you, loses sanity. Well, I think we'll lose the sanity token. That would bring him down from three down to two. And that will complete his encounter phase. We'll move on to Roland Banks. Roland is still in San Francisco, and that young Chthonian is still there, so we're going to have to go to a combat encounter. Now, the Chthonian's uh, toughness has been reduced to two now because he was, uh, Roland was able to wound it last time. So we'll begin with the will minus one test. And uh, Roland's will right now is a three. And uh, so we'll be rolling two dice for the test. And unfortunately, he rolled two failures. So we're going to take the horror damage from that. That's going to reduce our sanity level from three down to one. I did have a f uh, two focus tokens. I could have used those to try to limit the amount of sanity damage that he um, had to take, but I'm going to save those for the strength test. Maybe we can kill this thing with a couple successes. We'll go on to the strength test next. Roland's strength is a two. He has an improvement. That's three. He's going to use the axe. That'll give him plus two. That's five. And the test modifier is minus one, so Roland will be using four dice. And Roland managed to get one success. Now, if we can get one more, uh, that would prevent us from taking any damage, and it would kill the young Chthonian. So I think we're going to use our practice condition card, and that is going to allow us once per round, we may roll an additional die and re-roll up to one die. So that's what we're going to do. So we've re-rolled that one and added an extra die. Both of those are failures. So I think what we'll do is we'll have Roland spend one of his focus tokens, and he's going to re-roll one of those failures. He rolled a four, so that's a failure. Uh, I think we're going to spend our last focus token and see if we can kill this thing. We'll re-roll another one of those fours. And unfortunately, that's a failure. So we're, we do have one success. That's going to inflict one more wound on the Chthonian, giving him, uh, reducing his toughness down to one. But we're also going to take one point of damage because of his damage value of two minus one for the success. And that's going to um, move Roland Banks' health from is currently at five down to four. All right. So unfortunately, Roland burned a lot of capital in trying to defeat that young Chthonian and uh, still has one toughness left on it. So that's going to finish his encounter phase. We'll move on to Daryl Simmons. Daryl is currently in Shanghai, and he is going to attempt a Shanghai encounter. And the card reads, The shrine holds an abundance of ancient relics. Improve lore. Okay, that's great. So Daryl will get an improvement in lore. We'll give him an improvement token there that will raise his lore up to two. And then we'll read on. It says, uh, Your eye catches strange figures written on the ceiling. You find it hard to look away. Test will. His willpower is a three, so he'll be rolling three dice for the test. And Daryl rolled great. He has three successes. And we'll continue reading. If you fail, the writing seems to move on its own, gain a hallucination condition. So we just don't 
have any other effect other than preventing that from happening. Okay, that's going to conclude Daryl Simmons's encounter phase. We'll move on to Hank Sampson. He's also in Shanghai. And I think Hank is going to try a general city encounter instead of the Shanghai encounter. And the card reads, This idyllic city is invigorating but expensive. Recover one health and one sanity. That's great, and he needs that, especially on the sanity department. That will improve his sanity back up to four, which is great. And we'll continue reading. It says, you ask the locals about finding bargains, test influence. Hank Sampson's influence is a two, so we're going to have him uh, roll two dice for the test. And he fails, so uh, I think what he's going to do is he'll use his camera. And that says, once per round, when you spend a clue, you may gain a clue. So uh, Hank is going to spend a clue, and that will allow him to re-roll one of the dice, and then he's going to get that clue back. So we're going to re-roll one of those threes. And Hank rolled a six. That's a success. And it says, if you pass, they provide discounts, gain one resource. Okay, that's great. We'll give Hank a resource token that will conclude his encounter phase. We'll move on to the Mythos phase. And Mythos card is a yellow card that's uh, called Driven to Madness. We begin by advancing the Omen track. The Omen track is going to advance from the red circle to the blue star pattern. Now, fortunately, we have no blue gates on the board, but uh, as a part of having our gate stack, having the top gate revealed, the gate is Tokyo, which is blue. So that is going to reduce the doom track from eight down to seven. And the next is the reckoning phase. We'll start out to see if we have any monsters on the board with reckoning effects. And we currently do not. There are no monsters with reckoning effects. We'll move on to the ancient one. And that's Yig, and it says uh, spawn one cultist monster on the active expedition. Then, if there are two or more monsters on the space, advance Doom by one. The active ex expedition is in Istanbul. And there are no other monsters there, so we're in good shape that way. We're going to spawn one cultist there. And that's, that's all that will be required. So we spawn that cultist in Istanbul. And the next step in the resolution is whether there are any Reckoning effects cards on the board, Mythos cards. And those will be next to be resolved. We do have one, and that's that Awakening, the old ones. And the Reckoning effect on the Mythos card is Advance Doom by 1 and Spawn a Clue. So that means the Doom track will advance from 7 to 6, and then we're going to spawn a clue. Clue appears in space 17, and unfortunately the Doom Track is going to be down to 6 now. And now we have to check each of the investigators for any um, reckoning effects for their possessions or conditions. And fortunately, none of our invest investigators have any um, possessions or conditions that have reckoning effects on them. So we're in pretty good shape. We'll move on to the next step on the card, and that's going to be to spawn a gate. And the next gate on top of the gate stack is from Tokyo, so we're going to have it appear in Tokyo, and that will also spawn a monster. And along with that gate in Tokyo, a flying polyp arrives, and um, the next gate is a red gate, and that's the Arkham gate. And the card now, we read our event, and it's Driven to Madness. Each investigator may discard any number of ally assets. Then he loses one sanity for each ally asset that he has. Each investigator that lost sanity from this effect gains a madness condition. Hmm. Well, that for once worked in our favor. None of our investigators have any ally assets. So they're going to not lose any sanity from that, and therefore no madness condition. That's going to complete the Mythos phase, and we'll move on to another turn. We'll begin another turn uh, with the action phase, starting with Monterey Jack, our lead investigator. He's currently at the Sea Space 11. We're going to have him conduct a travel action. He's going to get to uh, Cape Town, South Africa. 
And while in Cape Town, he's going to spend his next action with a focus action, and he'll gain a focus token. That'll complete his turn. We'll move on to uh, Roland Banks. Roland is currently in San Francisco, but unfortunately, he is down to one sanity. So we're going to have to move him somewhere so that he'll be able to do a heal uh, action. And I think what we'll do is have him travel to uh, the Midwest, Space 5, and then once there, he's going to conduct a rest action. That'll move him up to 5 health and 2 sanity, and we'll move on to Daryl Simmons in Shanghai. And next up is Daryl Simmons. He's in Shanghai. I think I'm going to have him travel using the rail path to Bombay where there is a clue token there. He'll use his first action to travel and he's arrived in Bombay. And then I think we will have him um, conduct a focus action and gain a focus token. And that leaves us with Hank Sampson. He's currently in Shanghai. Um, we really need to move into Tokyo to try to take on that winged serpent, but the problem is now, with the appearance of that flying polyp, if Hank Sampson moves into Tokyo, the rules state that we have to battle non-epic monsters first before we move on to the epic monster. So that means that we would probably be taking some damage from the encounter with the flying polyp before we would even enter into the combat with the winged serpent, and I don't know that Hank Sampson's going to have enough firepower to handle both of those. I think he's going to need a little help. Um, the problem is, is the Doom Track is already at six. So I think what I'm going to do is have uh, Hank Sampson uh, remain in Shanghai. He's going to gain a focus token, and then he's going to conduct a acquire assets action. So we'll have him make a influence test. His influence is currently two. He has uh, two clue tokens, a resource token, and two focus tokens. He rolls one success, so we would be able to boost that up to two successes with the resource token. And that would allow him to gain the other world codex, plus one lore, plus one will. Um, I guess we'll do that because the plus one willpower would help him. So we'll spend the resource token and gain the Otherworld Codex. So we'll spend that uh, resource token that gets him two successes. We'll purchase the Otherworld Codex. And uh, that card is replaced with police assistance on the reserve. And that's a cost of one success. That'll end the action phase and we'll move on to the encounter phase. We'll begin with Monterey Jack. He's in Cape Town, South Africa, and he's going to undertake a token encounter, and that'll be a research encounter. All right, uh, Monterey's in a city, so we will read the city portion of that research card. And it reads, the power to your room is cut, and snakes slither in every corner. You try to reach an exit in the dark. Okay, we have to test observation minus one. Monterey Jack's observation value is a three, so we'll be rolling two dice for the test. He has uh, a couple of focus tokens at his disposal. He rolls a three and a five, so he has a success, and it reads, if you pass, you find out who tampered with your writing, wiring. Gain this clue. Okay, that's great. So we'll gain the clue. That completes Monterey's encounter phase. We'll move on to Roland Banks. Roland is in the Midwest, and he's going to undertake a generic city encounter. And the card reads, A shady figure offers to sell you a weapon, no questions asked. You speak with him to determine his motives. Test influence. All right, Roland Banks has an influence of two. So he will be able to roll two dice for the test. And he rolls two threes. That's a failure. So I think we're going to uh, implement his practiced card. And that says once per round, you may roll one additional die and re-roll one die when resolving a test. So that's what we'll do. We'll roll an extra one and re-roll one of those threes. 
Now, if we don't get a success, we have to flip the card. Okay, here's the roll. And fortunately, he did get a success. He has a six. It says, if you pass, gain one random weapon asset from the deck. Well, that's great. Let's find out what it is. And it's revealed to be a magical weapon, an enchanted dagger. Gain plus two strength during combat encounters. Okay, we'll add that to his tableau. That will complete his turn. We'll move on to Daryl Simmons in Bombay. Okay, Daryl is in the city of Bombay, and he's going to undertake a token encounter, and it will be a research encounter. So we'll have him draw a research card, and Bombay is a city location. And the card reads, Every snake in this city has been killed, and you fear Yig's wrath. You recite the chant that you hope will placate the snake god, lore minus two. Okay, Daryl Simmons currently has a lore of one, plus one improvement is two, minus two will give him a minimum of one die roll. Daryl rolls a three, that's a failure. I'm gonna have him spend one of his focus tokens and we're gonna re-roll that die. He rolled a two, that's a failure. I guess we'll have him spend his final focus token and re-roll that one again. Rolls a five, that's a success. We'll read on. It says, if you pass, Yig looks upon you favorably. Gain this clue and one additional clue. Well, that's great. Daryl has the card, seek the truth. Whenever you gain a clue during a research encounter, spawn a clue. Then it says you may spend three clues to and discard this card to advance the active mystery by one. He doesn't have enough clues to do that yet, but we will spawn an additional clue. And the clue is revealed to be in Tunguska, so we'll place that there. That's going to complete Daryl Simmons' turn, and we'll move on to Hank Sampson. Hank is in Shanghai, and I think we'll have him perform a general encounter. It'll be a general city encounter. And the card reads... A gravestone has been defaced with strange symbols. Test lore. All right, uh, Hank Sampson currently has a lore value of one plus one improvement. He also has plus one to lore from Otherworld Codex. So that will allow him to roll a total of three dice for the test. Hank did very well. He has a six. That's a success. And it reads, if you pass, the symbols lead you to a buried treasure. Gain one random magical asset from the deck. Okay, that's great. And he gains a spirit dagger. Item, weapon, magical. Gain plus one will and plus two strength during combat encounters. Okay, that's a good card. And that's going to end our encounter phase. We'll move on to the mythos phase. And the mythos card is a green card and we'll begin with a omen track movement. That's going to move the track from blue to green. And we do have, unfortunately, a green gate in San Francisco that is open. So that will move the Doom Track down one spot from six down to five. Next is going to be a monster surge, and that's going to occur in San Francisco. We're going to spawn two monsters there. And it ends up spawning a vampire and a child of the goat. Now the child of the goat has magical resistance and a um, reckoning effect that is going to move the doom track down one point on a roll of one or two. So not good. Next we're going to spawn a couple of clues and uh, we'll see where those go. And the first clue is going to be in space five. That's in the Midwest. That's where Roland Banks is situated right now. And the second one is going to be in Shanghai, and that's where Hank Sampson is, so that's convenient. And now we read the event. It's called Led Astray. Your experiences have made you more gullible rather than wiser. The terrible responsibilities you have taken upon yourself have made you more vulnerable rather than stronger. Event. Each investigator with at least one task asset loses three sanity and discards one task asset. Well, that is not good. Both Monterey Jack and Roland Banks do not have any uh, task assets, 
But Daryl Simpson does, or Daryl Simmons does. He has the seek the truth task. So he is going to have to lose three sanity and discard the task asset, which is very unfortunate because that we easily could have used that to bring the active mystery down by one. But he's going to lose three sanity. That'll bring him down to a total of two sanity. And that task is gone. Very unfortunate. And finally, we come to Hank Sampson, and fortunately, he does not have any um, task assets, so he won't be losing any sanity, which is good. That is going to complete uh, the turn, and I think we're going to end the video here. So we'll be returning with a fourth video, and we'll see if we can complete this in the uh, next filming. Um, I have my doubts. We're at uh, Doom level of five, and I've yet to yet to even uh, attempt that mystery with the winged serpent. It's just it slowly crept in where I just didn't have the uh, chance, the opportunity to take that thing out. I should have just gone in when I had the chance and just rushed it. We had all of our um, investigators nearby. We could have just all went into Tokyo and just kept piling on it, but it's probably what I should have done. Well. Uh, join me again at the Solo Gamers Club and we'll try to finish up our playthrough of Eldritch Horror. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.